A very good morning to you, Mr. Grayling. First Hello, of all, Joe Cox, your leader of the House, it's such an important day tomorrow that House has been recalled. Yeah, it is. This has been a deeply shocking experience for everyone in politics. I think people don't often realise that behind the scenes at Westminster, they see the hurly burly, but actually there are genuinely good relations that exist between people in different parties across different parts of the House. And every single one of the 650 members of Parliament will be shocked, will be grieving. Uh, this was one of us doing her job out on the street in her constituency. It could have been any member of parliament. Uh, so we, we mourn her loss. We feel deeply, deeply for her family. And tomorrow will be a somber occasion, but I hope also an occasion to remember somebody who, although she only spent a short time in parliament, had already made an impact uh, and had clearly made friends across all sides of the house. And can I just ask you on the house rules? Some people have been asking me uh, today, are MPs free to mingle on the benches? Are there any rules that say you have to sit as parties, as government and opposition? I don't think there are any formal rules, but I think for tomorrow's event, it's a celebration and a commemoration and an expression of profound sadness. Uh, and to my mind, it's an occasion where people should do what they feel comfortable doing. Do you think it will have a lasting effect on political discourse? We've had the Chancellor, others uh, saying today they want to see less inflammatory rhetoric, that it should, should change, and you, particularly when the public mainly see things like Prime Minister's questions, when it can get pretty leery. Well, I, mean, I always think politicians should seek to be reasonable, but it's a democracy and we're always going to have lively debate and that shouldn't stop because of one tragedy. Uh, but of course, I hope that discourse in this country will always be responsible and sensible and measured. Uh, that's what we should always aspire to do. But the idea that a, a lively democracy like ours will not have lively debate, that'll never happen. What we've got to do is to make sure that actually we still treat everyone in politics decently. And that matters particularly for those outside as well, those uh, contacting members of parliament, those writing about members of parliament. You know, there are 650 men and women from different persuasions, from different communities, who represent wholly different parts of the country. Uh, and almost invariably, those who arrive in Westminster do so because they want to make the country a better place. We might not agree with each other, but everybody really shares that same goal. Well, let me ask you how you see the Prime Minister's uh, comments today um, fitting in with whether it's lively debate or project fear, saying that your side of the campaign is based on three basic lies. We'll get on to them in more detail in a moment but the, your overall feeling and you're like um, yeah, parents um, putting children, irresponsible parents putting children in a dodgy car. Well, I mean, I wouldn't accuse anyone on the other side of lying. People have a different perspective but, 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 on but these is, issues. But, does, but is, is that just part of the debate or has he gone too far? Is it project fear? Well, look, I mean, the Prime Minister must answer for the words he uses. Yes, this has been a lively campaign. Yes, there are things that have been said which I don't agree with. Uh, and it is worth remembering it is only a few months since the Prime Minister himself said that actually we'd do fine outside the European Union. And he left open the possibility of leaving at the end of his negotiation. So I hope in the last few days everybody will actually be constructive and argue their point of view. This matters enormously to us on Thursday. There are strong arguments on both sides, both people making, both sides of the uh, debate making very strong arguments. The public will have to decide which of us is right. OK, but on those three points that he said that are based on untruths, uh, the idea that Turkey is going to join the European Union any time soon, that there's going to be uh, a European army, I mean, you know, and that there's £350 million a week going to the European Union. We all know that none of those things are true. Well, well, I mean, the situation with Turkey, it is government policy that Turkey should join and the European Union is currently accelerating talks on Turkey's membership. It is true to say that Serbia, so uh, Albania and other countries in the Balkan regions are likely to join first. But, but the Turkey UK has an absolute veto on Turkey's succession. It does, but it is British government policy that Turkey should join. It's worth remembering that. Uh, on the 350 million, if you apply for a job uh, and the salary on the job advert says £30,000 a year, what it doesn't say is £30,000 but we'll be paying, take, taking off tax and we'll deduct national insurance. You're a member of a pension scheme which means we'll knock off some money extra and actually you'll only be getting £23,000. What it says, headline £30,000. Our gross contribution, our overall contribution to the European Union, uh, according to the Office of National Statistics, is £367 million a week, £350 million a week rounded. From that, we get about half back in the form of a rebate a year later and in the form of grants to farmers and universities which we should certainly carry on. The other half we never see again. It disappears to be spent elsewhere in Europe and right. that's the money we could and should spend on other priorities. So you're saying back at your Prime Minister? 
Well, I'm saying that he's setting out a view, and I'm setting out a view from the other side of the argument. And well, we'll you're have a you're telling untruths, and you're saying you, we're not. Well, uh, we are colleagues. I respect the Prime Minister enormously. I'm going to put my side of the argument. He shall put his. And after the referendum on Thursday, whatever the result, we'll carry on working together uh, in the interest of the country to deliver the social changes that we need. And what about uh, your side of the argument, the broad side uh, of, of the argument, uh, and this, this poster from Nigel Farage and Co. Breaking point with a, a long queue of refugees slash immigrants, migrants wanting to get into the European Union. Well, two points on this. First of all, I think the poster's yeah. wrong. And secondly, it's the wrong argument, because the argument about migration in this referendum campaign is not about people or colour or creed or country of origin. It's actually about the simple fact that if we continue to absorb in this country every year a city the size of Newcastle upon Tyne, it puts huge pressure on housing, on school places, on our roads and our rail system, on the health service. Uh, and I don't think we can carry on with a situation where we have no ability to set any limits on the number of people okay, who come and live and work the in the United Kingdom. You said wrong. Uh, I mean, Michael Gove, your colleague in the in the campaign, and of course uh, on in the party, uh, said he shuddered when he saw it. You you didn't react like that. Well, I, th I said I think it's wrong. I think the post is wrong. I don't think it should have been done. Hmm. I can't, can't be much clearer than that. Well, it's not a strong, is it? Um, people saying it's vile as well. Well, I, mean, I, th I think this post was the wrong thing to do. I don't think it's appropriate. Wrong tactically I think it's wrong. or just wrong? just wrong, just just plain racist. Wrong. Sorry. I'm, I'm not going to use evocative language. I'm just going to say it's wrong. It was the wrong poster. It was the wrong approach. It's the wrong view. Uh, and you know, I take the view, Dermot, that this country has benefited enormously from migration, from being a cosmopolitan country. We've got communities that have come to the United Kingdom that have made a real difference to us. The argument now is not about those people who've come here who are working hard in the United Kingdom already. It's about the flow of people in the future, the pressure it puts on housing. You know, if we continue to see that level of population arrive in the UK every year, how do we do the right thing in ensuring that the next generation here already, from all backgrounds and all origins, can get on the housing ladder? Uh, that they can afford the rents in our properties, that there's space on the trains in the morning. That's the real debate about migration. And lastly, whatever the, the result, uh, do you think you're going to keep your job and that the Prime Minister should, should keep his? Things stay the same, whatever the result, from your point of view, within the Conservative Party and its leadership? Well, he can decide on my job, that's for him. But as far as I'm concerned, he stays in his job. We need him whatever the result is. Uh, whether we vote to leave when we need him uh, because we're going to need his personal relationships in Europe, uh, we're going to need the leadership he can provide in working with other European countries to ensure a smooth departure, but also because I think he's been instrumental in leading a government that's turned our economy around since 2010, and I don't want that to but change. But it's also been said about you and the way you personally have campaigned to lead that you've been avoiding the so-called blue on blue and that others within the campaign will be punished who've avoid, who haven't avoided that, who've criticised elements of, of current government policy. Do you see that from John Whittingdale, Pretty Patel, people like that? They, they've got it a bit wrong in the tone of their campaigning. Yes, I don't think this should be about punishment. I think it's about people who believe passionately in something arguing for it. And the Prime Minister did the right thing in giving all of us freedom to make our case on the different sides of the argument. That is a mature democracy. And yes, it's been a lively debate. It was always going to be a lively debate. But I'll Ultimately, what makes this different is that the people decide on Thursday. and We will all have to pay attention and listen to what they say, accept their verdict, and then get on with the job of whatever follows from that. And he should give a big job to Boris Johnson. Well, I mean, he'll decide uh, on, uh, on what he does with Boris. Boris has been a, a, a great campaigner in this country for many years, and I'm sure he's got a major role to play in government and uh, in all the other things he seeks to do, which are usually pretty multiple. OK, Leader of the House, thank you very much indeed. Chris Grayling there.